In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get Sega CD up and running on your Project Lunar Hack for your Genesis Mini Console. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to say if you guys can do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel. The support you guys have given me is so amazing and I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, that would mean the world to me if you'd be willing to go down and hit that sub button. Thank you guys for being such a great community. And with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get this thing started. So I've been getting a lot of questions regarding getting Sega CD up and running since Project Lunar version 1.0.5 has come out. And that's what we're going to focus on in this video. The first thing that we're going to want to do is obviously open up Project Lunar and we're going to go ahead and go into our game manager. Now assuming you guys have not downloaded the appropriate cores, you are going to need to make sure you get the Genesis Plus GX core and the Pico Drive core loaded up onto your console. If you've done that, you can skip this step, but if you haven't, you're going to need to do that. What we need to do is go to our tool section, and then we need to go to Get RetroArch Cores. What this is going to do is it's going to open up a web browser that's going to have access to all of our cores. So you're going to need to download these. I already have them, and I've already got them loaded up, but this is where you're going to download them. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to load those up onto our USB drive. So we need to make sure our USB drive is plugged into our computer and mine already is. I'm going to pull up the USB drive right over here. And what we need to do is actually load up not only our RetroArch cores, but we're also going to need to load up our BIOS files. We're going to do that all on the USB drive before we pop it into our console and before we start loading our games. So we need to go to our Project Lunar folder. Then we need to go to our RetroArch folder, and then here's where we're going to be putting in a few different things. As you can see, if I double click on the cores folder, I've got all of my cores just dumped right on into here. There's nothing else that you need to do. That's essentially how you're going to add any core you want for RetroArch or Emulation Station. Now we're going to navigate back, and to put in our BIOS files, they're going to go into this Systems folder. So I'm going to double click on this. Now, as you guys can see, I have all of the different BIOS files for all the different consoles, but these are the three that you're going to need for Sega CD to run. BIOS underscore CD underscore E, BIOS underscore CD underscore J, and BIOS underscore CD underscore U. Those are the three that you need. Each represents a different region, so that's going to give you the flexibility of playing whatever region game you want. This is also going to be where you would load up any other BIOS files for any other CD-based consoles. So if you've got the Saturn BIOS, it's going to go into here. If you've got the PlayStation 1 BIOS, this is where it's all going to go. But that's all that we need to do on the USB drive. We're going to go ahead and remove that, pop it into our Sega Genesis mini console, and we're going to turn it back on. So we now have our console up and running. We've got our free space available, and it is very important if you're planning on playing Sega CD, you need to be able to use that USB. USB drive. Now, obviously, I already had my USB drive set up, but if you've been loading all your games to your console directly, you cannot do Sega CD on the console directly simply because there isn't enough space for those games. So moving on to the next step, we're going to go ahead and add a game. Now we want to add the games in CHD format. And the reason for that is right now BinQ is not working 100%. So if you have BinQ, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a software called CHD Man that actually helps you convert your BinQ into a CHD. Or if you've already got CHD, we can load those up directly. Additionally, because we are not using BinQ right now, in terms of multi-disc games, we are going to skip those temporarily. And when we get the proper support for those in the future, I'll be sure to let you guys know, and we can get those up and running then. So, as with any other game that we're going to add, we're going to go ahead and hit the Add New Game button. We need to navigate to wherever we have our Sega CD games, and as you can see, I've got a bunch of them here. I'm going to go ahead and load up Final Fight CD. And as you can see, it is a CHD extension. We're gonna hit open. We're gonna get our add new game box pop up. And what we need to do first off is select the executor. And for this, we can choose Genesis plus GX. Pico Drive does not support CHD. So we're gonna be focusing on Genesis plus GX. When we do get support for multi-disc games and bin Q, we will be using Pico Drive for those types of games. For now, we're just going to be selecting the Genesis Plus GX core. As you can see, our custom command has changed, 
And now what we need to do is scrape the artwork. Now what I've personally found is when you use the GamesDB scraper, you tend to get better results specifically for Sega CD. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this scraper. We're gonna hit get game information. It loads up pretty quickly. All we have to do is select it and we're good to go. Obviously our spine box art isn't ideal, but this is acceptable for me. I never use the spine display anyway, so I'm okay with the way it looks. Along with all the metadata that's available, the number of players have all come in, everything looks proper. So we just need to hit the add game button. And as you can see, we've got it right over here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to convert a bin Q format into a CHD if you have bin Q as your format. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we need a software called CHD Man. So I've got it right here, and I will leave a link in the description for you guys to be able to go and download it. As you can see, when you download it, you're going to have a CHD Man application, and then you're gonna have a bunch of batch files. These batch files essentially send instructions to that application to do everything automated for you. The one that we're gonna be using specifically for our purpose today is going to be this one right here, the Q or GDI to CHD. The other ones are actually gonna convert your CHD back into bin Q or back into a GDI file. We don't wanna use those two. Again, we just want the Q to CHD batch file. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that over here and we have them available to us. Next, what we need to do is locate a game that is in bin Q format. So for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Batman Returns game, which I've got right over here. Now, I thought this would be a good example because it has multiple tracks. As you can see, it says Batman Returns track one, and it goes all the way down to track 21 right over here. It also does have a Q file. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna confirm the Q file points properly to all of the different bin files. So we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna open this in Notepad++. Now we've got Notepad++ up and running. We can see here that it's got track one all the way down to track 21. Everything looks like it is properly formatted. The name matches exactly how it should. The spacing's correct. Even the case sensitivity is correct. So we're good. We can go ahead and close this. We don't need it. We're gonna go ahead and grab our CHD man application and our Q to CHD Windows batch file. Then we're going to go ahead and copy that into the folder where these games are. We're gonna hit copy here. And then all we need to do to get this to work is just double click on the batch file. As you can see, a command prompt window opens up and it's going to start compressing. Now this process can take about two to three minutes per game. So you do have to be patient while this is all happening but I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this process. As soon as the software is done running its process, it'll automatically close and it'll disappear. As you can now see inside of the folder, we do have a Batman CHD file and we've also still got our CHD man and the Q2 CHD batch files. We don't need those, we can go ahead and remove those and we're gonna keep our CHD right here. Now you can choose to keep your bin Q. You can also choose to get rid of those if you don't wanna have so much extra space with your ROMs on your desktop or on your hard drives, you can make the choice as to what you would prefer to keep. I would recommend testing out the CHD file before you go ahead and delete any bin Qs though. So the next step of course is going to be adding the CHD file onto Project Lunar. So we're gonna go ahead and add a new game. We're gonna jump into our Batman Returns folder and we're gonna locate that CHD file. We're gonna hit open. We've got our add new game window that pops up. We're gonna go ahead and use the game's DB. We're gonna get more information and we're going to select our Sega CD artwork. So all that's left for us now is to grab our executor core, which is going to be Genesis plus GX. We're gonna select that and hit add game. Now, as you can see, I've got Batman Returns here and it is gonna be loaded up onto our console. Now, I'm gonna add maybe two or three more additional games, but I am gonna fast forward through that really quickly. All right, so I've loaded a bunch of games on here. All that's left for us to do is to sync to our console. So we're gonna hit the sync button. We're gonna sync now, and it's gonna begin this process. Now I'm gonna let it finish, but I do recommend that after it's completed syncing, you turn off your Genesis mini console and power cycle it by removing the power cord, plugging the power cord back in, and then turning your console back on. So I'm gonna fast forward through this process, and then I'm just gonna jump straight into the Genesis mini console. All right, so here we are. Let's jump right on into Project Lunar. 
Perfect. So we've got everything up and running. I'm going to go ahead and swap this out so it's displayed in A to Z format. And as you can see, I've got my Sega CD Batman Returns. We've got uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaur. Uh, we're going to scroll through and see what else we have here. We've got Final Fight CD. We've got Pitfall, the Mayan Adventure. We've got Snatcher, which is a big fan favorite. We've got Sonic CD. And we've also got Star Wars Rebel Assault. And I think that's all of the ones that I added into here. Yeah, it looks like that's all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up the CHD files. And I'm also going to load up the BinQ Batman Returns game just to show you guys that they are running properly. So first one, let's go ahead and jump into some Sonic CD. So as you can see, Sonic CD ran fairly well. Everything is running properly with our CHD files. Now I do want to load up the Batman Returns game just to show you guys that our converted games do work as well. So if you recall, this was one of those bin Q files that had a huge amount of bin files, I think 20 or 21 different files. So I do want to show you that the converted CHD file does work just the same. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing loaded up and we'll check it out. And that game ran perfectly well too. So just to finish us off, we're going to select one more game to play. And I think in this case, we are going to go ahead and do some Final Fight CD. So let's get this loaded up. And there you have it guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Please leave a comment in the comment section below if you guys have any questions at all. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.